it is strange to think that like at the time you're the only female performer amongst all these you know these crazy hippies basically who are also performing with you and they have all these monsters and grouches and and birds and all everything and you have to play this quintessential girl character what did that feel limiting at the beginning of like i have to you know speak for a whole group of people through this this you know pink no. blonde thing or how how did you approach that in the beginning yeah it's a good question. I, I never thought that she had to represent everybody. Mm. Uh, what Jim said to me, you know, after I worked on the show, you know, coming from never having really puppeteer before. So after I was just sort of doing anything, you know, Muppet Girls, um, he they, there was this puppet that already existed. It was called Little Pink or just Pink, which she was. And uh, he sort of handed me to her and said, we'd like you to come up with a character who would be, you know, a very sweet quintessential girl. Now, I don't know why he said sweet, but that I guess is what he thought would, would work. And I, I, I know that if you, everybody can't be the class clown, first of all. If everybody's way out there and crazy, and then I don't think anything works. It's like you have a straight man and you have the guy that's really funny, like Carl Reiner was with Mel Brooks. I was, I was just going to say that, yes. Oh, really? Well, they're <laughs> yeah. sort of the greatest example of that. But any comedy team, there's some balance. They're not all off. They're not both off the wall. So, and also because I was the only female, I, I never felt like, I could top these brilliant guys that I was working with. You know, they were so good at puppeteering and so good at, I mean, I think this may, some of this is subconscious, but even when we're together, and I'm not getting off topic, but even when uh, Bill Beretta and Dave Goltz and Frank and I get together for a Zoom thing, uh, I am not going to top them. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm the one that's laughing at them all the time, which of course they love, but they tickle me. They, they make me laugh. But I, if I came in there and was like this brassy, whatever, it, it just, no. And um, that just, my instinct tells me to just be who I am. And I'm a great audience. If somebody's funny, boy, I will laugh hysterically. So uh, with Prairie Dawn, uh those that that was the only things that i was told for her to be and so i started talking in this very high kind of breathy marilyn monroe-ish voice i mean that was the only thing that occurred to me at the time to do uh and then i mean she carried a hanky back then so she was very sweet for a while <laughs> and then as, as the time went by i just sort of thought she was funnier the bossier she got because she's the smallest puppet or she was at that time and then it's all these boys around her and yet she's the one directing the pageants and playing the piano and all of this stuff and i i still think she was a very funny character but what i have ascertained is that the producers now think that that's not good modeling behavior, mm. which I think is too bad because I think funny is is good. But they, I guess, I, I can't, I can't get in their way sure, here. Sure, sure. But I, and I know, I know Kevin was a big fan of Prairie Dawn's because she would get very, very upset, you know, and fly off the handle if the boys didn't do what she said. And uh, I always thought it was very funny that that this strong personality came out of this little puppet. Uh, and also because I'm, you know, I think who I am was also coming through at this point too. And then the writers would write for her. And, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a communal process, but I, I think she was kind of boring when all she did was go, oh, welcome, oh, welcome to our little play. You know, there's just so much of that. But after a while, if she said, no, you've got to move on on the other, you know, it's funny. And oh, that's yeah. What we tried to be. 
No, I think uh, something that I always point to when when I tell people like, oh, no, Sesame was like the comedy there was made for the adults because it was all adults playing it. And people kind of look at me with with wry eyes and I like go watch Prairie Dawn direct uh, Grover and singing in the rain. Oh, Um, that's one of my favorite bits, too. (laughs) And it's just it's absolutely hysterical. It's that same sort of thing of, you know, her just bossing everybody around. Yeah, Yeah. no, I, I love that. Yeah, it was a nice hook for her too. Mm-hmm. You know, every puppet needs certain hooks. Like Bert collect had all those boring collections of bottle tops and you know watched pigeons and you know stuff like that. It's it, and Cookie Monster of course eats ferociously. And of course, this is a problem with writing for female characters because. If a female character was eating everything, they would say, uh-oh, that character has an eating disorder and she's not modeling good behavior for, for females or we're right. making fun of females. So it's always been a delicate balance. I think they're handling it better now, but all the years that I was there, they were so careful about, oh, but it's a female doing this. and. You know, instead of just throwing caution to the wind and just saying, you can have some crazy people. 